Good evening, Bosun Bay Presbyterian Church. How are you doing? I hope you're well. I hope you're finding time to rest and to slow down. I hope you're finding time to talk with other people, to make phone calls and text. Been on WhatsApp with a lot of you, just trying to see if you're doing well. I hope that you are okay financially, that you have enough supplies, that you have enough food. Um, know that we're praying for the economy. Know that we're praying for... Um, jobs for it really for for the uh, virus just to to leave our island as as quickly as that could happen um so uh in all of this uh, let us know particularly if you have some um if you have a need if you know of a neighbor who just needs extra food uh let's just try to be together in this as much as we can and in fact being together in this as much as we can is part of what we're talking about tonight the fact that um the bible has a lot to say about loneliness and what happens when we're not together. Uh, so tonight we're going to talk about the, the dangers of loneliness. Last week we, we kicked off this series and talked about how uh, it, it was not good for man to be alone. When God created, he said it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good. And before rebellion, before sin enters the world, before the curse, uh, before anything like that, before evil entirely, uh, Man was alone, and God said it is not good for man to be alone. So the question is, why was that? And so partially um, uh, that it goes against our nature, that God created us. He said, let us make man in our image. And so God is triune. God is in community. God was never, ever alone. Uh, before creation, God has always existed in relationship and community. And so he made us. The, in his image to, to be that way. So in this way, we are. Um, what happens is that it, it's our our nature. Say so that it's just it's not good for man to be alone, and so that means it's not sinful if you're feeling lonely. It, it means that you, uh, your your nature is such that you were made to be together. Our kind of society and culture today uh, has said that primarily the the husband and wife relationship is, is what satisfies that that need for community along and that can be a, a major factor in it absolutely but I, I think this this is a far more basic and fundamental thing I think the New Testament in particular dignifies uh, the need for love and community and relationships uh, far beyond just the the marital um, relationship um, is that idea that the household of faith that's what the sermon was about on sunday that that we are brothers and sisters that we belong to one household even if we're scattered across nations if we're exiles strangers in a strange land uh you are you belong to the house of god that you matter god brings in the eunuchs god brings in the slaves god brings in all the people in this house and says uh you belong that you are part of this community and you matter uh, so that was last week. We saw the, the foundations that, that loneliness is actually woven into our nature, uh, that we're created for community. Uh, but also then, because of today, we want to look at the, the dangers. Like what, does it, what happens when someone whose nature is made to, to reflect the image of a triune God, uh, what happens when you are alone? Um, this is a huge topic. We're, we're just going to get into the... We're basically we're just kind of brushed to the surface, but I think this is a, a fruitful area for for study and reflection and prayer all week long. And I really do think it primes us to to be able to offer something really meaningful to the world. Um, and the world needs it. So we're going to be looking at First John chapter four. You could turn there with me. First John chapter four. We're going to be reading verses seven through twelve. First John. You can pause it if you need pause and then. Get there. First John chapter 4, beginning at verse 7, tells us, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, and because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, 
God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Thanks be to God for this reading from his word. Another reading that, that I've been doing is um, from this author. This is a man called Patrick Lencioni. Uh, he is um, a business author. He's written many books about business and leadership and management. And uh, one of his most famous books is called uh, The Five Dysfunctions of the Team. He goes through different dysfunctions and how workplace teams or just any team, um, really what, what makes them not work. And so from that we can learn what does work. And he said one of the, the problems that plagues a lot of teams is a lack of buy-in. So the idea is that there's a meeting happening, everyone's around the table and there's a leader and they say, here's the problem, we need solutions, we need to do something to fix this problem, to go forward, uh, here's our work as a team, what are we going to do? And he says, here's the problem, and um, he throws out his suggestion, maybe someone else throws out their suggestion, uh, but there's like eight people around the table. And the problem is, is if someone has an idea, if someone has thought about this, someone thinks, oh, maybe this will work, um, if, they, if they have something to contribute, but if they don't voice their opinion if they don't speak up, um, if the leader doesn't call on them and ask for their opinion, no. uh, they are going to they're going to struggle. What he says is to buy in to whatever idea the group comes up with. So, if he gone around the room and he, everyone got to speak, if everyone shared their thoughts, if everyone shared their concerns, and if everyone shared uh, their ideas, they they might have eight different ideas, uh, but and they can only do one, right? You can only go forward with one idea. But the thing is, is that if you have spoken, if people have acknowledged your idea, people said, yes, I hear you. That's interesting. Thank you. Even if we say, no, we're not going to do that. And here's why. The idea is that having been heard, having been seen, makes you now more likely to, to really buy into the idea. So if, if you haven't been heard, then you're going to struggle to follow along. You're going to not buy into the real ideas as much as possible. And I think that says a lot about our, our passage, this idea that the importance of being seen. The, the last line in the last verse is, No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. So, like I said, we are made in the image of, of a triune God, and there's a sense that Adam had this perfect relationship with God. Oh. But there's this also this strange sense in which uh, God knows that we don't see God, that no one has ever seen God, is what it says. Oh. And so, like, it's not sin to be lonely, even if you're a Christian, even if you have this great relationship with God. It says, we don't see God yet. Oh. What does it say? If we love one another... God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. And so the idea is that by looking at one another, by seeing and seeing other people and being seen by them, like something happens. That that is a, a connection happens, and, and being seen enables us to, to feel more secure, more part of the team, the human race team, part of the church, part of your family. Um, so... If, if in the family you're trying to make a decision, what should we have for dinner tonight or things like that, uh, just everyone has a, a voice, everyone has a desire, and, and we don't have to agree with every voice, but everybody wants and needs to be seen. Um, and I think you all have seen some of the consequences of who are the people who have not been seen, um, who feels overlooked, who feels unseen uh, in your families, in your relationships, um, or in the world. I've noticed that particularly in larger cities um, where there are homeless people, people begging on the streets, um, more often than not, they won't look you in the eyes as they're begging for money. Part of that is because no one looks them in the eyes. And so they've been trained that all these people passing by, passing by, passing by, none of them look at them. No one sees them. They don't have that visual connection. And when you, you don't have that connection, then uh, it trains you. That he says, you're not worthy of being seen. Uh, you are someone who we are free to overlook. I mean, so it starts to change your understanding of yourself. It starts to change what happens if you go unseen. I'm going to read something from an article from um, The New Yorker a couple years back. Um, 
here we go. It says, the most powerful human forces are found in the meeting of the face and the gaze. Only there do we exist for one another. In the gaze of the other we become, and in our own gaze others become. It is there too that we can be destroyed. Being unseen is devastating, and so is not seen. So the idea is that because we're made in the image of a triune in community God, is that we need community to be fully human. Um, and so that we need to see others so that they can become, and we need to be seen so that we can become. And, and it's not just what's good for them and what's good for you. It, it's that in that connection, something important and wonderful um, starts to happen, is that you become more real. You become more who you were designed to be um, in that way. That article for The New Yorker is actually this really fascinating long follow-up uh, on one of the worst mass murders, or not one of, the, the highest mass shootings in the history of the world. One guy in Norway takes a gun uh, to a, a children's camp and just opens fire. And the, the body count there was the highest body count of any one shooter, now, at least at, by that time. Uh, this was a few years ago. And there was another shooting in Canada this last weekend. It was a serial killer who went from house to house and killed and killed and killed. And the the author was trying to say, like, how does that happen? Like, what hap What makes it possible for someone to be able to do that? Like, how can you see another human being and think that that's someone that we can just kill, that we can just remove from this world? Uh, part of that article goes on to say um, this. He says, society has protective systems in place that should make um, the shooter's actions and the actions of those who mow down their fellow students impossible. I'm not thinking of child protective services or of schools or of any civic authority, not even the police. Rather, I'm thinking of the bonds among people, the presence of the other in ourselves and the responsiveness around which every community and culture is built, which reveals itself in the commandment we see in the face of others. Do not kill. To you hear that last line? It's interesting. It says, uh, there's a commandment we see in the face of another. In the face of another person, we see, do not kill. At least that, that's what we're supposed to see. The idea is that when we look at another person, now, uh, we're looking at the image of God, that in community we are surrounded by, we see face to face, we're supposed to gaze and behold at God's image. So humans aren't God. We're not those kind of new age pantheists that like God's in everything and does everything. That's not what we're saying, but we're saying that God did make humans in a special way, um, that it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good makes mankind he says it, it's very good man alone is made in the image of God and so when we look at another person we're supposed to see the image of God you know it's a little off when like you see someone like mistreat an animal right you see someone kicking a dog um, you like part of you like ooh, like that's not okay there's something wrong with that um, but particularly just when we see another human we're supposed to recognize the image of God in that person and then the re image of God in us is, is recognized in them and so when we do that we see the commandment thou shalt not kill is like not killing another person um, is part of our it's us not having violence and anger towards God himself uh, about the way it's all created the way we're, we're designed to be and I think that's vital I think the notion that when we see another person, we're supposed to see, oh, this is someone who should be honored, not worshipped like God, um, but this is someone who has dignity, and I'm going to treat them with dignity. Um, so it's not about how good of a person we think they are. It's not about what they've done lately to help us. Are, are they contributing to society, things like that? It's this idea, no, like if they're human, then they're made in the image of God, and and. There's something either in you that's there or isn't there that sees them and recognizes that. And so if you're not recognizing the image of God in other people, it says less about that person. It says something more about you. 
So this doesn't mean that all of us always need to be constantly surrounded by tons of people. Of course not. Like, um, there's an important part for solitude. Uh, we all need quiet time. We all need alone time. We'll get to that next week. This, the, the advantages, the benefits of um, loneliness in some sense. Um, so it would be more like ice solitude. Um, uh, it's not that you always need people. Um, some of us are more social by nature. Some of us are more extroverted by nature. That, that's great. We are, we're not all designed the same, and that's important. But all of us are meant to exist within community. The fruits of the Spirit, uh, the righteous virtues that we're called to, uh, are not exercised in isolation. Uh, that love, peace, peace, kindness, patience, gentleness, like requires that there's some sort of interaction happening. That you're not just gentle all alone by yourself in a room is that you're, you're gentle towards other people that your peace is between people kindness is between people that that the fruit of spirit to, to be fully human to be what god has created you to be um, means that you are in some fashion in community that you're in some fashion not alone um, so our application is, is is that we are called to be not alone um, so application here is uh, what from our text what's it says so this is love yeah. everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God whoever does not love does not know God because God is love and this is how God shown his love showed his love to us he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him that God's love was not just him from a distance and us here he says he he sent so love is is sending so we need to apply this by sending in some sense as well we need by interacting uh, by knowing god um, so we need to spend time this week sending um, loving interacting so that's texting that's calling um, really just get to get to know someone you haven't gotten to know yet or just follow up with someone you haven't talked to in a little while uh, love 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 reach out phone text facetime if you can see each other that way it's important. Um, but then also the other part is, is knowing God. And so spend some time just knowing him. Spend some time reading about him in the scripture, praying, singing songs, getting to know him better. Um, and then when we do that, it's going to move us towards one another, um, even in our own homes. Uh, so know that we have people in our congregation who are, are suffering losses of loved ones. Um, I'm not going to say names on here because it's going over the internet. It's just better to, uh, but reach out to me if you need to know, um, and I'll connect you. Uh, we have people who, who could use follow-up calls, people who can use virtual hugs, however that can happen. Um, but there's also just many of us who um, are not married and might need extra friends and companionship during this time that um, unmarried people get hugged and touched a lot less on, on a normal basis. But now, and in, in social distancing we just get far far less of that so make sure that they're we're texting everyone that we're calling people um and then also um yeah spend time with the lord spend time with others um that something happens when you go unseen um i think you know too just the, the final note from that article that i was talking about is um one of the the last interactions, it says, a few months before the shooter carried out the assault, he visited his former stepmother and told her that he was going to do something that would make his father proud. His mother had left his father when he was one, and it had been years since he had spoken to him. He wanted to be seen. That's what drove him. Nothing else. Um, yeah, just don't withhold love. And so it, if... The father wasn't around. That that never ever excuses anyone from doing something as horrible as that shooter did. Um, but just know that in your own hearts, like that, when you have been unseen, when you feel overlooked, when you feel that like you, your siblings got more attention than you, when you feel that um, your wife or your spouse doesn't understand you, when you feel like other people get visits from the pastor but you don't, or just like any type of of being unseen is this place that is going to be a deep vulnerability to you. Uh, know that it's good to reach out and say, hey, I need somebody to say that they're proud of me.
I need someone to say that they see me. I need someone to say that they love me. I need someone to say that, that I am acceptable and that I belong. So reach out to others. Spend time with the Lord. Um, and then just spend some own time with your own heart and say, when have you? When are you vulnerable to this? What happens to your heart and soul and spirit uh, when you are unseen? Uh, because it is in that being seen, in that shared love. Uh, what's it say? It says, no one has seen God, verse 12. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. It doesn't say God lives in you and me. It's not this individualistic thing. It says when that love flows, when we're seeing one another, when, when we're loving one another, God lives in us. That in that connection, in that mutual scene, in that mutual dwelling, uh, God lives there. Um, it says, whoever loves has been born of God. Um, so, um, so if you are unseen, if people have been mistreating you, abusing you, ignoring you, neglecting you, uh, that's not your fault. Um, but recognize that it, it will damage you in some way. Uh, not likely that you'll become a serial killer, um, but uh, no one goes scot-free in this world. That that if you are, are separated, if you're isolated, if you are lonely, if you're disconnected, uh, you're it's going to stunt your growth and your healing. And it's important for you to to be together. Um, so we are doing what we can as elders, as a church, to, to reach out, to love, to care. Neighbors are loving neighbors. families loving family. Um, but if you notice yourself being alone, if you notice yourself feeling lonely, uh, pray that, that God will work in our hearts, that we'll reach out to you. But, but don't hesitate for you to reach out yourself. Um, it is no lack of faith. It doesn't mean that you're weak. It doesn't mean that you're bad. It doesn't mean that you're anything. It's, it's actually the far more mature thing to do is to speak up and say, you know what, no one has ever really told me that they're proud of me, or I'm just feeling a little unseen lately. Um, and we will like uh, say, yeah, wow, thank you for sharing that. That is so hard. Um, together, let's just work on being seen mutually. Let's look at each other. Let's talk. Tell me about your day. Tell me about what's going on. I think we all need that. So that's something the world needs and it's something the church can really offer. So, again, I hope you're doing well. I miss you. I'm excited to see more of you in person and I'm excited to hug and to sing and hear your voices and all those things. Um, but in the meantime, remember that God has promised never to leave us, never to forsake us, um, but that he's also created us uh, to be in community with each other as well. And so the virus might put physical barriers up uh, but that doesn't mean yeah not everyone's ever going to get married not everyone's going to have kids and so like community is going to look different for a lot of people but but it's not optional uh, we need it and so i want to invite you to to be reaching out and to to be loving each other and in that love god promises to dwell so let's praise his name for it and praying for one another hope you're doing well love you bye